Summer Math Mashup is a collaborative effort between the Department of Mathematics at Iowa State University and the North Central Region of the Governor's STEM Advisory Council. Hi, nice to meet you. My name is Steve Butler, and currently I, I teach mathematics at Iowa State University. And I've been teaching now for quite a long time. You can tell there's a lot of gray here in this beard. And I love math. It's a great job because I love to solve puzzles and I love to think. And math is a lot about solving puzzles and thinking about things and finding beautiful patterns all around us. So today we're going to do a little bit of shuffling. After all, they say every day we are shuffling, shuffling. All right, so what are we going to do? Well, I have here a deck of cards. It's not really that unusual. It's a, a pretty standard deck of cards. You can buy decks like these in the store. And we're going to demonstrate some shuffling. Now, before we begin, I, I should comment that there are some cultures out there that are very opposed to doing anything with cards. They feel like, no, 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 it's gambling and that's wrong. I want to assure you that what we do today, there's absolutely no randomness involved. There's no chance. So this is all going to be very tightly controlled. But what are we going to be doing? Well, so we'll open up this deck of cards and we'll take a look. So here we go. There's our cards. And you'll notice, ah, a nice full deck. We've got our, our hearts, we've got our, our clubs, our diamonds, our spades. And we even have some jokers at the end. Now we don't want the jokers right now. We'll come back and talk about the jokers later on. So we'll take them out. And you'll notice that they come in a really nice order. And why? Well, this way, when you look at your deck, you can see, look, I have all the cards. It's really easy to quickly confirm all your cards are there when they're in this nice order. If they're all jumbled up, it might take you a while to figure out, wait, am I missing a card? Or sometimes, wait, do I have an extra card? That's happened sometimes, so you gotta be careful. You might also notice something a little bit interesting in that you start ace to king, ace, king, and then you kind of go back, king, ace, king, ace. There's actually a beautiful reason for that. And uh, hopefully if we have time, I'll mention it uh, at some point. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to shuffle these decks. Now, most of the time when people think about shuffling, it's like, oh, we're gonna make everything nice and random, which is right, what you wanna do, right? You, you wanna play a game. It's not very interesting if everybody knows what the next card is. So that's why you want to normally shuffle. But we're going to, to shuffle in a very controlled way. So what does that mean? Well, we're going to do what are known as perfect shuffles, also known as pharaoh shuffles. And so let me uh, demonstrate. First, we take our deck, and we got to make sure we have it exactly in half. So I was like, yeah, OK, there we go. That feels about half. Good. And then we're going to just put our cards together. And there we go. Now, what's happened here? Well, if you look, it's every other. So in other words, we're exactly alternating one side to the other side, you know, back and forth. And I really am shuffling. I, I want to assure you, this is not some sort of sleight of hand. I, I don't know any magic. I can't do any, any fancy tricks, but I can shuffle. So we're going to, to do these a couple times and talk about what's going on. Now, as we continue shuffling, the cards are changing the orders, but because we're shuffling in this nice, really controlled way, everything is happening in a very predictable manner. And so we can uh, just keep going and see what happens. Now, you might wonder, how long is this shuffling going to last? We've only got like a little time here. Are we gonna be shuffling for the next hour? Well, no, probably not. So there we've done, that's four shuffles, right? And now we see our deck. Okay, what do we notice? Well, the cards are not in the order we started in. So yes, something has happened. But we know that, you know, we were doing something a little bit like controlled. So this shouldn't be completely random. And it's not, <laughs> it's not random. And let's stare at this for a second and ask ourselves a simple question. Where's the halfway point? Can you spot it? Do you see it? 
It's right here. Now you might say, well, how, why do you say right there? You know, you didn't see me counting, but it's right there. Now why? Look at those nines. Where are they next to? They're next to queens. Where are they next to? They're next to queens. Which are next to sixes, which are next to nines, which are next to two, three, six, five, two. There's symmetry. See this point right here, that's the halfway point because there's symmetry on both sides. Oh, that's so cool. That's so cool. So now we know, yeah, definitely no randomness going on here. All right. Well, that was, of course, four shuffles, but uh, we'll do a couple more. So, in fact, uh, we'll do four more. So, here we go. Now, of course, it is important to, if you're, say, playing a game, well, you just don't want to shuffle for some reason, to make sure things are going very well. And indeed, one of the things mathematicians sometimes get involved with is, you know, casinos will come and say, hey, are we shuffling our cards well enough? And sometimes mathematicians will say, nope, because there's still a little bit of pattern in it, you know? And you might say, well, does that matter? And to a casino, yeah, because if there's any pattern, then a good player can pick up on the pattern and they can spot it and use it to their advantage. So it's important to understand, you know, how does shuffling work? How does randomness work? Of course, if you ask 10 mathematicians, you know, what does it mean to be random? You'll get 12 different answers. It's a hard question. It's a hard question. All right. Now, I said we were going to do four more. This is actually the fourth one since that point, which means we've done eight shuffles in total. Now, oftentimes, if you were just doing normal shuffling, you'd say, great, perfect, we're done. We don't need to shuffle anymore. But we weren't doing normal shuffles. So when we look, we say, aha. <laughs> We're back exactly where we started. We got our, our spades, diamonds, clubs, hearts. Exactly the same order. Amazing, amazing. Now, a lot of questions start to come up. How did that happen? Why eight? Because we shuffled eight times. You know, what's going on here? So we're going to focus on answering the question, how do we know it would take eight shuffles? Now, one way we could do it, of course, is just keep doing it over and over and just say, okay, how long until I get back to where I started? There's a beautiful fact that says, look, if you consistently do the same thing to a deck of cards, so in other words, you have a shuffle and you do it the same shuffle over and over and over again, no matter what shuffle it is, you must eventually return to where you start. So you could just keep doing it until you start, but there must be a nicer way, a more elegant mathematical way to figure out the answer What's special about eight? And that's what we want to get to. All right, well, let's uh, do a, a simple example. Instead of jumping right into 52, let's be able to answer the question for any size that we may want. So in particular, let's start with a smaller deck. So we're gonna start with a deck which has 10 cards. All right, so here we go. Here's a deck with 10 cards, and you'll see them right here. And now the blue numbers here, those are labels of the cards. So they're labeled zero, one, two, all the way up to nine. The red numbers are the positions. Again, zero, one, two, all the way up to nine. Now you might be looking at this and saying, hmm, why do you start at zero? Shouldn't things start at one? Isn't one the first number? It shouldn't it make more sense to start there? And uh, in some cases, yes, in some cases, no. And, and there are really good situations where it does make sense to start at zero first. And so it just depends on context. So for us, we'll see that it's very convenient for us to start at zero. All right, now what's happening? Well, you can imagine that our fingers represent the cards. So we have 10 fingers, 10 cards. So what we're doing when we talk about a perfect shuffle is we're taking it and cutting it exactly in half. All right, that's part of it. And then we're going to interlace them together. Every other one. And we're also the card that was on the top is going to stay on the top. All right, so that's what happens with the perfect shuffle. And so now we can just follow along. So if this was the arrangement of cards originally, you see the top half is zero through four, 
and they're going to be every other one going down. And the bottom half, well, that's 5 through 9, and that's every other one going down. All right, great. So what can we do? Well, now we can look at this and start saying, hmm, what's happening? Oh. And in particular, we can ask the question, where do the cards go? Okay, so what do we mean by that? Well, let's look at each card. So the card that was in position zero, well, that was a zero, and it went to zero. Great, zero went to zero. That's easy. Uh, where did one go? Well, one ended up at two. All right, and how about two? Well, that ended up at four. Oh, this is nice. I, I feel like something's going on here. Three ended up at six. Beautiful, beautiful. And four ended up at eight. All right, fantastic. Woohoo! And we see this, we say, ah, there's a pattern here. I can tell you where the cards are going, right? Zero to zero, one to two, two to four, three to six, four to eight. What's happening? We're doubling, we times it by two. So what's happening here is if I have a card, I, you know, that's, that's the position that it's currently in, it's gonna end up going to two times I. Beautiful, beautiful, nice answer. But wait a second, we're, we're, we're not done. We just talked about the top half. All right, well, let's talk about the bottom half. Okay, well, where does five go to? Well, five, oh, it went to one. Hmm, it's not really doubling, is it? All right, how about six? Well, that went to three. And seven, that went to five. And, uh, Eight, well, that went to seven. And nine, well, that went to nine. Hmm, okay. Now, this one's a little bit more curious because it doesn't feel like doubling, does it? You know, uh, you don't double five to get one, normally. You know, what's going on? What's the rule? What's the rule? So here's one way we can think about, well, what if we had doubled, right? Well, we would think, well, five would be going to 10. Well, one's a little bit off. How much? It's off by nine. Six would go to 12, but we're at three. How far are we off? We're off by nine. Seven would go to 14. Wait, nine away is five. Eight is double that 16. Off by nine would be seven. Okay, all right, I think it almost acts like doubling, but then there's like this weird correction because, you know, it's not just doubling, but you gotta somehow bring it back up. So, down here, we say, look, I would go to two I, but gotta do a correction and minus nine. Now, we look at this and we say, ah, 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 it's, it's like we have two different scenarios and two different rules. And what we'd like to do is to have one rule. One rule to rule them all. One rule to find them. One rule to bring them all. And in the light of mathematics, bind them. That's what we'd like. That's what we'd like. So how can we do it? Well, I mean, really, we look at this and we say the, the challenge here is this minus nine. If we could somehow say, you know, that minus nine we can ignore, life is good. And then we can go back and keep going forward like we did before. So how can we do that? Well, for this, let's go on a small detour. And uh, there's this beautiful idea if we think about time. So imagine that currently, it's, here's, this is gonna be a clock. So it's currently at 10. So there's our clock, it's at 10, and you contact your friend. You say, ah, oh, I just got this cool new video game. It's totally awesome. Come over and play. Can you be here in three hours from now? Okay, so now it's at 10, and then we're gonna add three hours. Okay, great. What time? Is your friend gonna be here? All right, so it's 10, three hours later, 
your friend is going to be there at? Right, it's not 13, it's at 1. Well, how did 10 plus 3 become 1? Well, the answer is we have this sort of modular thing going on, where when we think of time, we say, hey, time resets. So every time you go past 12, you're resetting. And so there's this reset that occurs. So 10 plus 3 equals, uh, of course, we should draw our time here, and it's at 1. All right, well, this idea of resetting, we're, we can think of it as what I, I mentioned the word already. It's called modular arithmetic. And uh, our, sometimes you also hear the word modulo. And what it means is it says, look, I really only care about what happens as a number from, you know, 1 to 12. And so anything past 12, I just subtract to bring it back. So 13 subtract 12 becomes 1. So, in essence, I don't care about multiples of 12 anymore. I can get rid of them. So what we can do is we can say, okay, well, let's do the same thing here. Now, instead of 12, though, our magic number is 9. We say, all right, look, we don't care about multiples of 9. So if you add 9 or subtract 9, we're going to think it's the same thing. Well, that says, look, this minus 9 does nothing anymore. So the way we indicate this is we say, all right, the the rule will be that wherever the card is at, position i, it's going to map to 2 times i, and then we're going to say modulo, which we shorthand as mod, 9. And so that's the one rule. This rule combines everything and tells us where the cards go. And there we are. All right. Well, that's if we have a deck with 10 cards. Now we have a good answer about where do the cards go. Now, what happens in general? Well, in general, we say, look, we're going to have where the card in position i is going to go to 2 times i and modulo n minus 1. So, see, so like 10 cards became 9. All right. Now, how do we use this? And here's a really fun fact. Once the card that's in position 1 returns back to position 1, all the cards are back to where they started. Now remember, position 1 is not the top card. It's actually the card just below. So what we can do is keep track of what's happening. So let's suppose we have a deck with n equals 10. All right, 10 cards. So. In other words, we're going to have i maps to 2i, and we're going to do it mod 9. So we just follow the card 1. So what's the rule? Every time, we double. And then we check the number. If it's bigger than 9, subtract 9. That's it. And we keep doing that until we get back to 1. So 1 goes to 2, because, OK, we can double. 2 goes to 4. All right, great. We can double. 4, well, where does that go? Goes to 8. All right, great. Where does that go? Well, 8 goes to 16. Well, wait, 16, that's bigger than 9. So what do we do? Well, we subtract 9 and say, really, that's the same as 7. See, that's like how the 13 became the 1 in terms of time. That's what the same process here. All right, where did 7 go to? Well. That goes 14. Okay, again, well, that's too big. All right, so we subtract 9, and that's 5. And that, we double, that goes to 10. Well, that's too big. Subtract 9, and what do we end up with? We get 1. Okay, we're back to 1. So, how many shuffles do we need? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, for 10 cards, it takes six shuffles. All right, well, that's a kind of a big number for 10, right? For 52, it took eight. Let's talk about 52. All right, so let's do, here we go, a deck with n equals 52. Okay, so what's the rule? We double, but now 
mod 51, right? One smaller. Okay, 51. Okay, so the rules just keep doubling until if a number is too big, subtract 51. So one goes to two, two goes to four, four goes to eight. Oh, I love powers of two. There's, you know, I don't know if you're like me, but sometimes I just like to walk around and think about powers of two. It's it's a fun go. Like how high can you get with your powers of two? All right, 32 goes to 64. Oh, too big, too big. Okay, well we subtract 51. 64 subtract 51 leaves us with 13. All right, that goes to 26, and 26 goes to 52. Oh, that sounds like a nice number. It's bigger than 51. And when we subtract, what do we end up with? We get back to one. Okay, how many shuffles? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight shuffles, eight shuffles. Wow, <laughs> exactly what we said. And so it works with any number of cards. It has to be an even, right? Because we have to be able to split when we talk about these shuffles. But you can now do this with any kind of deck you want. Now remember, I'd mentioned the jokers. So normally when you open up a deck of cards, we often think of like 52 cards, but the jokers would make it 54. All right, well that's two extra cards. Would that change anything? Okay, should we try it? All right, now this is a great chance for you. You can, you can do it with me, or you can pause and do it yourself, and then you know compare answers. And uh, so uh, I think th it might surprise you a little bit. Uh, it, maybe not. I don't know. Maybe you're not easily surprised. I hope you are. The world is full of cool stuff. It's nice to be surprised. So a deck with 54 cards. We threw our jokers in. And so our rule, I goes to 2i. And again, mod 53. So anytime we get a number bigger than 53, subtract 53 from it. All right, all right, last warning before we start. If you wanna do this yourself, you should pause here, carry it out, and, and then you can come back and check. Otherwise, let's begin. And we're gonna go out of pace here because there's a lot to do. <laughs> I've done this before. All right, here we go. One goes to two, goes to four, goes to eight, goes to 16, goes to 32, goes to 64. Ah, oh, I love those powers of two. Now, 64, too big. Okay, so what do we do? We subtract 53. Now, 64 subtract 53 means this is really 11. Okay, now keep doubling, 22, 44. All right, 88, aha, 88, that's too big. So what do we do? We subtract 53, so which means this is really isn't 88, it's really 35. Okay, which is gonna become 70. Ooh, that's too big. Subtract 53, all right, that's really 17, which becomes 34. All right, that's great, which becomes 68. Ooh, too big. Subtract 53, that's gonna become 15. Double becomes 30, double again, that becomes 60. Ah, too big. Subtract 53, seven. Oh, that's a nice number, nice and small. We'll get to double for a while. Seven becomes 14. 14 becomes 28. 28 becomes 56. Too big, subtract 53, becomes, ooh, three, nice. Okay, double becomes six, and 12, and 24, and 48. Ah, oh, this is so cool, we're on a roll. 96, oh, too big. Okay, so we're going to subtract 53, and if we do that, we'll be left with 43. Double that, 86, oop, too big. And if we subtract, that becomes 33. Double becomes 66. Oh, too big again. Subtract, that becomes 13. Okay, oh, 13 was good down here. Well, 13 becomes what? Well, 26. And then that becomes 52. And, oh, that's not the end though, because we're doing it mod 53. Okay, well, that becomes, big number, 104. All right. <laughs> I said it's a big number. If you subtract 53, that becomes 51. Okay, 
Well, that becomes 102. Okay. <laughs> wow, these really are big numbers. Okay, that becomes 49. All right, great. Which becomes uh, 49. If you double that, uh, you get 98. Okay, well, okay, too big, right? Subtract 53, what do you get? Well, you're going to end up with uh, 45, right? Yeah, 45. Okay, double that, and you get 90. Okay, too big. Subtract 53, and we're going to get 37. Okay, then that goes to 74. Well, okay, too big. That becomes what? Well, uh, 74, 53, that would be 21. All right, good. Well, 42. Some think, people think it's the answer to life, universe, everything. Maybe. At this point, that's yeah, just a step in our computation. Okay, 42. That becomes 84. Oh, too big. Wow. 31. Goes to 62. Too big. Wow. Okay, but it's not so far off, right? That's a 9. All right. Oh, there's a chance for us to do some doubling here. 18, 36, nice. 72, okay, that's too big. So we got to correct. That makes that 19. Goes to 38. Uh, goes to 76. Now 76, too big again. All right, so that's really 23. Okay, and 23, double that, makes 46. <sighs> Are we ever going to finish? We will, we will. Hold on. 46 goes to 92. Okay, how are we doing? Hanging in there? Now, what do we do? Subtract 53. Okay, if we subtract 53, we're going to end up with 39. All right, goes to 78. Okay, too big again. But that would become 25. All right, goes to 50. All right, that's fine. Goes to 100. Okay, too big. That's going to become 47 which makes this 94. Too big. Okay, all right. So that's going to become, uh, subtract 53 from 94. That gives us 41. Okay, which goes to 82. Aha! Too big. <laughs> all right, so we're going to subtract 53, and that would leave us with 29, which takes that to 58. Okay, oh, a common phrase. Too big. But notice, it's kind of nice. What do we end up with? We end up with 5. Oh, that's a nice number. 10 goes to 20, goes to 40, goes to 80. All right, 80 is what? Well, it'll be, uh, subtract 53, 27. And what happens next? Well, if you double 27, you get 54. And subtract 53, you get 1. We did it. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> we got back to 1. But it took a while, didn't it? Wow. If you count, you know, 52. It took 52 steps. And it's amazing because, you know, when you had just the 52 cards, you were like, oh, 8, and we're done. You throw in those those jokers, 54 cards, also it's like, oh, 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 and it takes 52. So even just like a small number of cards difference can lead to a huge change in the answer. This is also a wonderful demonstration of why you should never work with jokers. <laughs> now, you can repeat everything that we just did for any number of, of cards, uh, well, any number of even cards. And let's just take a look at the data. And you can generate this data by yourself. You just have to be very patient. You can either do it by really going slowly through the cards and working on it, or just use what we just did. Okay, so here's our data. So this is how many shuffles does it take to get the deck back to where we started? And we have basically everything through 100. And so you can see the green numbers here, number of cards, the sort of orangey ones are the number of shuffles, and it's kind of all over the place. And it's this sort of interesting thing going on. Now, you notice for us, oh, the 54, that took a lot of shuffles. 
Now, is it only 54 where that happens? And the answer is no. In fact, there's a lot of places where it takes a fair amount of shuffles. For example, 60 takes 58, 62 takes 60, 68, that takes a lot of shuffles, 66, uh, 84, that takes a lot of shuffles, takes 82. And even at the start, there's a, there's a, a couple of examples near the beginning where we see, hey, it can take a fair amount of shuffles to get our deck back to where we started. So somehow there's some interesting decks where it's like, wow, you ought to keep like going and going and going. And uh, it sort of makes you wonder. And there's this beautiful question. So let's talk about for just a moment, because we're, we're almost done here. Let's say a, a, a long shuffling deck is something where we have n cards but it takes n minus two shuffles to reset. Now, n minus two is the most that can ever happen. Now, the reason the minus two is that the top and bottom cards never change position. So if it's n minus two, what it says is that that card, which is just below the top card, cycles through every possible card. And, and so that's the maximum possible. And so what's going on here? Well, what we see is that there are these decks which take a long time. The 54 is, is the one that most people might ever encounter, but there's other ones as well. So in particular, there's 12 long shuffling decks that are below 100. So those are the ones that we circled on the previous data. If you look at below 1,000, well, there's 67 of them. Below 10,000, 470 of them. Below 100,000, well, 3,603. Below a million? There's 29,341. So what we see is, well, yeah, they exist, and they seem to keep popping up. But if you look at the numbers here, they also seem to be getting kind of rare. They're showing up less and less often. And it leads to this question. Are there infinitely many of these long shuffling decks? In other words, are there infinitely many values for n, where n is a even number, where if we take a deck with n cards, we'd have to go n minus two times shuffling to get back to reset the deck. What do you think? And I, I really want you to, to think about this. And if you're with somebody, ask them what they think. Get an opinion and make sure, you know, go ahead and pause if you need to, but think about what, you, what, what the answer is. Are there infinitely many or are there not? It, it's, a, it's a yes, no question. What do you think? Do you want to know? All right, all right. Here's the answer. We don't know. <laughs> we, we don't know. Uh, now you might be like, oh, Steve, oh, you're messing with us. I can't believe you're doing this to us. Um, this, is, this is actually a very famous question. So this is called Artin's Conjecture. So Emila Artin. He was a mathematician, and he asked this question almost 100 years ago. And it's a really interesting question in a, in a part of mathematics known as number theory. Thousands of mathematicians have looked at this problem. And so by now, there's been you know, hundreds of thousands of hours spent trying to answer this question. Are there infinitely many decks that are like this? And we still don't know. Now, you might be sort of like, wait a second, I thought math was the place that had all the answers. Uh, but that's not what math is. Math is not about having the answers. Math is about learning how to find the answers. And there are lots of problems where we don't know the answers yet. But what math will do is to help us figure out ways to approach problems. And sometimes when we have a problem where we don't know, it'll help us find new ways to discover things. That's why I love math. Math is about discovering. And there's so much out there that we don't know. So many things for us to look at and to discover. Now you might say, isn't that discouraging? I mean, there's things that we don't know. But there was a, a famous mathematician uh, who gave an address and he finished it. It was in German, so I'll do the translation. I don't speak German. But he said, look, we must know. We will know. And that's what drives math, our desire to know, our desire to discover. And it's a wonderful, beautiful subject. 
and I am so excited that you you are you know you're young you're embarking on this discovery of mathematics there's so many things that are out there and I hope you enjoy it thank you so much for joining me as we talk a little bit about shuffling I hope you keep checking in with the rest of these videos and I hope you have a great time take care thank you for joining us this week we encourage you to explore this activity as a family. Our goal is to empower families and kids in math by making math accessible and engaging. We want to thank all the students in the Department of Mathematics who made this event possible. Learn more about upcoming STEM events and opportunities at www.ncstemhub.iastate.edu.